Let's take a look at how we can use Vex to create Premvars and control render settings inside of Solaris. So as always, this project file will be available on Patreon, but all I've done here is just create a simple scene with a pig head, and all I've done is made it sit on the origin, and I've merged that with a grid, and I've assigned a couple of materials. Just got two here, so a simple base material, Nothing's changed except for the roughness. I've cranked that up a little bit. And then for our light, I have the same thing, just cranked up the roughness and then added an emissive amount along with a color. And the reason for that is because I have assigned that to our pig head and I'm going to use their pig head as a light just to demonstrate super simply what we are doing here. Now I've also added a dome light with a zero intensity. So that's just to keep the scene super dark. So I can go ahead and click on our render, and this is what we have in our scene. If we wanted to change the way our, so right now this is being rendered just as the emissive material, so it's super noisy. So if we set this to a geometry light, it's going to actually render and clean up a lot faster. So the normal way you can do this is through a render geometry settings. And wire this in. And there's a lot of different settings in here, and this is actually how you would go about creating some different uh, render settings per object. So I can just drag in our stop create for the primitives, and you could you know select different objects and have a whole bunch of these and control things like motion blur or the sampling quality, uh, diffuse limits, and stuff like that all within this node. But there's, as you can see, there's a lot of different things that are in this, and you may not want to have all of them, you know, all of these kind of clogging everything up. You may want to just assign different render settings all at once uh, to, to a bunch of different um, primitives and, and just do that through Vex. It may be easier for you. I don't know. Uh, personally, I like this, but some people may want to do it through Vex. So let's come down to this light and we can select this treat as light source. We'll select that and sec uh, select set or create. And right now it's going to be set to no. So if I go ahead and select our SOP create, you can see we have this new primvar with this set to zero. And it's saying, so primvars, and then it's specifying which render this is for, which, so you can, if we was using like Redshift, you would type in Redshift, we'll cover that in a bit. And then it's specifying this an object and then what property it is referring to. So, Let's go ahead, I have this render gallery set up. All you have to do is select new, pa uh, new pane type, come to Solaris and the render gallery. So let's take a snapshot of this and then let's come in here. Actually, we'll rename this. We'll see RGS for render geometry settings and we'll set this to yes. And then, or sorry, we'll set this to no, not yes. And then let's set this, this one to yes. Let this clean up. It is rendered. Let's take another snapshot and we'll set this to RGS. Yes. So if I just maximize this and come to our render gallery, I can click on our no and you can see that it's super noisy. But once we have this turned on as a mesh light, it is a lot more cleaned up. So let's come back to our scene view and we can show how we can do this inside of Vex. So we'll do attribute wrangle. And let's go ahead and just bypass this. We can turn off our render for now as well. And what we're gonna do is the same thing that we would normally do. So we'll do I at for generating an integer because that's what type this, this primvar was. So then we'll type in primvar or primvars and then colon. And then we have to specify that we want it to be karma and that we wanna be referring to an object. And then we have to set up our name of our actual attribute or setting that we want to create. So we're going to do treat underscore as as underscore light source. And we'll set that equal to zero for now. And let's make sure that we select our stop create and just apply that to our primitives. Now you can see that we have this prem bar that is set up. So let's go ahead and turn our render back on. And this is fully cleaned up. So let's take another snapshot of this. Let's name this attribute wrangle no, because it is turned off. And then let's set this to one. 
re-render, give it a second, take another snapshot. We'll say AW yes for this one. And let's full screen here, come back to our render gallery. And if I select our no, you can see that it is super noisy again, but if I select our yes, where it is turned on as a mesh light, it has cleaned up quite a bit. And the difference between these two, where we're using the geometry settings node or the attribute wrangle is simply just the noise pattern. So we're getting the same effect for both. So let's just take a look at another setting that we can do this with that's super obvious. So in our re render geometry settings, we have this holdout mode. We can set this to a couple different things, but let's just create that same thing. So I'm just gonna copy this. It is also a integer. So we need to change the name here. We're still using Karma, so we're all good on that. And for this, we just need to specify that it is hold out mode, press control and enter. And since this is set to one, you see that it immediately becomes a holdout for our render. So I can turn that back off by setting it to zero and our object comes back. Now I'm gonna quickly show how we can do this for other renders, specifically Redshift as an example, because I have a license for that. So let's take a look at that. I'm just gonna turn that off. I'm gonna turn our geometry settings back on and let's come back up to the top here and come to Redshift. And the one that's super easy to see what's going on is this primary ray visibility. So let's set or create that. And you can see that we get a new prim var. And then, like I said, the first thing after the prim vars is the render that you're using. So in this case, it has been set to Redshift and then still referring to an object. And then the name of the attribute or setting is mesh flag underscore primary ray visible. And this is set to true. So let's just fire up Redshift and see what we get with this. So if I turn this off, you can see that our pig head disappears. And if I turn it back on, our pig head comes back. So how can we go about doing this inside of a wrangle? Let's go ahead and take a look. So I'm going to, let's actually just turn this off for the moment. I'm just gonna copy this line and I'm going to make it a string because the render geometry settings, if I take a look back at this, says true, so it should be a string. So let's take a look, we'll set that to an S and then we need to change it to Redshift from Karma. So Redshift. And then we need to change the name. So for this one, it was called mesh flag underscore primary ray visible. In all, in all caps, got that all typed out right. And we'll set this equal to, and let's set this to true for now. So control and enter, and we have the exact same thing that we had before. And we can come back to our render and turn on our redshift. But we have a little bit of a problem here, and that is very obvious because our pig head has disappeared. Now we've done everything the exact same, or so you would think, because everything looks the exact same. But we have one problem. This, this is actually not a string. This is actually a Boolean. So we need to specify that through our bindings. So we can copy the name of this attribute. So primvars, come to our bindings. Let's add one. Let's paste in our primvar name and let's set this to bool. And then we get an error and that's because this needs to no longer be a string. This needs to be an integer because it is a zero or a one value. So we'll do I at primvars equal to, and then we want it to be visible. So let's just press one and we can control and enter. And now our pig head has become visible again. If I set this to zero, you can see that that is going to make it disappear. So if you wanted to use Vex to control different render settings, you definitely can you cannot just have it assigned inside of like a SOP create or something like that. You have to do it on this main SOP level. So just be aware of that. You can't just import things as it's not gonna work. But 
That is a quick rundown of how you can use Vex to create these prem vars. Not only just create prem vars, but also use it to control render settings for different renders, because uh, that may be useful depending on what you're doing. But personally, I would say just go with this render geometry settings. Everything's kind of all in there and it makes it super easy and you only have to, you know, select things that you want and you don't have to remember the name of every individual thing or have to go and try and look it up or whatever it may be. Uh, but, you know, you do you. If you want to use Vex, then use Vex. as the Houdini way, I suppose. But anyways, thank you all for watching and have a good day. <laughs>